Hi, I'm Elizabeth, this is the Bookish North and my weekly reading wrap up which I honestly thought wouldn't be happening this week because at the beginning of the week I was not reading anything apart from my audiobook and uh, well I thought at least I can talk about that audiobook which isn't quite a self-help book like last week but it's adjacent, I would say. Uh, I've been listening to uh, The Secret Lives of Introverts by Jen Graneman. And uh, I've only ever read one book about being an introvert, and that was Quiet by Susan Cain, which was the book that taught me the word and the concept of introvert, which I was grateful for, because it taught me something about myself that I needed to know. I really liked that label because it felt fitting. Uh, but I didn't feel that that book was all that relevant to me because Quiet very much deals with being an introvert in, while trying to make it in the American corporate world and that didn't feel relevant to me. So I've been meaning to read something else that would probably, that would hopefully be more geared to what I wanted to know. And The Secret Lives of Introverts at least partly was that. It's a book that is more specifically talking about what introversion is, um, what different types of introversions, some things connected to being an introvert, like for instance uh, it taught me the term having an introvert hangover, which I kind of liked. Um, it's if you've been had, if you've been having a lot of social stimuli you can feel like you're having a hangover, the same kind of feeling that you'll have after an alcohol-induced hangover uh, afterwards. And I've certainly had that feeling, so I, I just never had um, a word for it. I like having words for things, so I'm happy to have uh, heard about that. It also talks about being an introvert in specific situations like dating or being in a relationship, or uh, at, or in the workplace, uh, but it was way more nuanced in that than Quiet was. It's talking about a lot of different kinds of workplaces, like teachers and social workers and retail workers and, you know, all kinds of things, in addition to corporate um, world, the corporate world as well. Um, I did find this book interesting. Uh, it did teach me some things about myself, more so than uh, self-help books have, I would say. Uh, but it was also a few things that bugged me about it. Uh, primarily the tone of voice at times, which I felt was uh, a bit too uh, like, oh poor me, I'm an introvert and I'm cons constantly misunderstood uh, kind of attitude towards things that just feels completely alien to me and maybe that's because I'm living in Norway and that the bias towards extroversion is less in Norway than it is in the US I don't know, but that, that tone just bugged me at times. And then at other times it was the complete opposite, that us introverts have these unique skills that nobody else have and it makes you very special and valuable and... I mean, she says herself that 30 to 50 percent of the populations are introverts, so having introvert skills won't make you unique in any way. You're just an introvert. I don't know. But yeah, I'm happy to have listened to that. Uh, I did enjoy it. I think I gave it three stars. It's uh, not going to be the most memorable thing I've read this year, but um, I don't regret picking it up. And then I thought I would just show you the books that was on my currently reading pile uh, in my video last week. And out of those, I have not read a single page of The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt this week. So I'm just gonna put it down here and uh, ignore it for the rest of this video. Uh, then you ha we have The Years by Annie Erno, which I'm supposed to be reading for Women in Translation Month. 
and I've read about 50 pages this week and it is every bit as good as people say it is. I am loving it, uh, but I'm reading it very slowly. It's translated from the French by Alison Strayer and uh, I'm gonna leave this off for now as well and uh, talk about it more when I have gone, gotten a bit further in it. And then the last book from last week's pile was You Are Not Human, How Words Kill by Simon Lancaster. And this I finished today. And this is a book about metaphor and about the power of metaphor and how the words we use to describe people deeply affects how we see them and what we are capable of doing to them. Uh, and this was a hard read, uh, subject-wise. It did infuriate me and disgust me at times. Uh, it was certainly an eye-opening read, because there are things in here that I've sort of taken for granted. Uh, the words we use to describe people are, in many cases, so ingrained that you don't really think about them anymore as being metaphors and you don't think about the implications that the metaphors uh, bring to the table but this book makes it very visible and hard to ignore which I think is its strength. Um, it's not terribly nuanced and at times I'm not sure how far I can trust the details in it but overall I found I didn't care because uh, because uh, the things it made me realize felt so important that I was willing to overlook some minor flaws or minor details and it it's the kind of book that start, is starting a process for me, I think, because it makes me want to go out and find out more and uh, be more informed and more capable of making up my own opinion. But as a starting point, I think this book was brilliant. It is very accessibly and engagingly written and I would expect nothing else from Simon Lancaster who is a professional speech writer so he certainly knows how to make an argument and uh, yeah this was a great read it was a hard read because the subject matter is not easy um, he talks about these very specific cases where language and metaphors have literally uh, been a decisive factor between life or death um, and he talks about various uh, studies done where the only difference have been the use of language and how that has had significant differences in how human beings are willing to treat other human beings uh, just depending on how these other human beings have been uh, described to them uh, and it was interesting it was depressing uh, and yeah if this sounds at all like your cup of tea I uh, would give it a try um, because uh, I think this for me is a book that is gonna stay with me for a while I'm gonna keep thinking about the stuff I've read here for yeah for many months to come um, yeah I, I think that's about what all I have to say about it for now so that was my audiobook and my pile from last week um, I have been working a lot this week and I usually reward myself in some way or form when I feel sorry for myself quite often with chocolate and uh, more often with books and on Thursday I ended my work day at a meeting in the center of Oslo and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to go by Tronsmo which is my favorite bookshop in Oslo and I bought three books 
I bought uh, this one called Kärlekens Antarktis by Sara Stridsberg. It's a Swedish author and this is a Swedish edition because I'm trying to get into reading more Swedish again. I really like reading in Swedish but I haven't done it for the last two years, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love Sara Stridsberg and uh, this is her latest novel and I want to read it. So, you know, I bought it. I also bought this, which is called The Odd Woman and the City by Vivian Gornick. It's a memoir, and apart from that, I don't really know anything about it. It seems to be about walking around New York, and I'm always interested in reading about people walking about big cities. So that's why I bought that one. And then I bought this little thing. It's uh, called uh, Den Andre Forsvinninga, or The Other Disappearance, by Kjersti Annestatter Skumsvall. She's one of my favorite Norwegian authors. And this book is in a series where authors are talking about their reading and writing. And uh, I love reading about other people's reading and writing, uh, so I wanted this. I s borrowed this as an ebook from the library and read the first few pages there and I just knew I needed to have my own copy so I bought it. I have started it, I've read 25 out of the 100 pages so far and I am really enjoying it. It's probably not going to be the most memorable thing uh, I'm reading but I am really enjoying it while reading it. And then I have also bought one other book this week, a bit earlier in the week and it's this one called Aldri, 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 or Never, 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 by Lindströmsborg, another Norwegian author. This is a very new release. It's been out like a week or so. Uh, and uh, once I heard about this, I knew I needed to read this. Uh, it's probably the one book from the Norwegian catalogues this autumn that I was most intrigued to read uh, because it sounded exactly like what I wanted to read when I picked up Motherhood by Sheila Hetty and which I felt that that book didn't give me. Uh, and so this is a book about a 35 year old woman who's in a relationship with a man uh, they've been together or lived together for eight years and she is adamant that she does not want to have children and she has made this clear to him at the very beginning of their relationship and he has been okay with this but when her best friends uh, her two best friends that she grew up with and who are now a couple uh, announced that they are having a child together uh, everything changes for her because then her boyfriend realizes that he really wants to be a father and she has not changed her mind. She is not expecting to change her mind anytime soon or anytime at all really. And she's also kind of worried about what this will mean for her friendship with her best friends uh, and how everything will be affected. And I absolutely love this book. This was exactly what I wanted to read. It's about it, it, it explores motherhood in various ways. She, through her mother, her grandmother, through looking at her friends, uh, through the questions she is continuously asked by all the people around her, and through her own thoughts and ideas about, about what she wants to be, and how a mother is not one of those things, and how she still feels like a complete human being despite not having the experience of motherhood and uh, yeah this was great this was exactly what I wanted and I loved it so I ended my reading week on a very high note and uh, I'm happy about that what next week will bring I have absolutely no idea don't know what I will be reading if anything at all but I guess you'll just have to Check back with me next week to hear all about it. Until next time, bye bye.